Chapter 3. The Decrees of God. I. Definition of Decrees. By the decrees of God we mean that eternal plan by which God has rendered certain all the events of the universe, past, present, and future. Notice in explanation that a. The decrees are many only to our finite comprehension, in their own nature they are but one plan, which embraces not only effects but also causes, not only the ends to be secured but also the means needful to secure them. In Romans 8 verse 28, called according to his purpose, the many decrees for the salvation of many individuals are represented as forming but one purpose of God. Ephesians 1 verse 11, foreordained according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will. Notice again the word, purpose, in the singular. Ephesians 3 verse 11, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. This one purpose or plan of God includes both means and ends, prayer and its answer, labor and its fruit. Tyrolese proverb, God has his plan for every man. Every man, as well as Jean Paul, is, der Einzige, the unique. There is a single plan which embraces all things, we use the word decree when we think of it partitively, pepper. See Hodge, Outlines of Theology, 1st ED, 165, 2DED, 200, in fact, no event is isolated. To determine one involves determination of the whole concatenation of causes and effects which constitutes the universe. The word plan is preferable to the word decrees, because plan excludes the ideas of 1. Plurality, 2. Short-sightedness, 3. Arbitrariness, 4. Compulsion. b. The decrees, as the eternal act of an infinitely perfect will, though they have logical relations to each other, have no chronological relation. They are not therefore the result of deliberation, in any sense that implies short-sightedness or hesitancy. Logically, in God's decree the sun precedes the sunlight, and the decree to bring into being a father precedes the decree that there shall be a son. God decrees man before he decrees man's act, he decrees the creation of man before he decrees man's existence. But there is no chronological succession. Counsel, in Ephesians 1 verse 11, the counsel of his will, means, not deliberation, but wisdom. C. Since the will in which the decrees have their origin is a free will, the decrees are not a merely instinctive or necessary exercise of the divine intelligence or volition, such as pantheism supposes. It belongs to the perfection of God that he have a plan. And the best possible plan. Here is no necessity, but only the certainty that infinite wisdom will act wisely. God's decrees are not God, they are not identical with his essence. They do not flow from his being in the same necessary way in which the eternal Son proceeds from the eternal Father. There is free will in God, which acts with infinite certainty, yet without necessity. To call even the decree of salvation necessary is to deny grace, and to make an unfree God. See Dick, Lectures on Theology, 1 355, Lect 34. d. The decrees have reference to things outside of God. God does not decree to be holy, nor to exist as three persons in one essence. Decrees are the preparation for external events, the embracing of certain things and acts in a plan. They do not include those processes and operations within the Godhead which have no reference to the universe. e. The decrees primarily respect the acts of God himself, in creation, providence, and grace, secondarily, the acts of free creatures, which he foresees will result therefrom. While we deny the assertion of Wedden, that, the divine plan embraces only divine actions, we grant that God's plan has reference primarily to his own actions, and that the sinful acts of men, in particular, are the objects, not of a decree that God will efficiently produce them, but of a decree that God will permit men, in the exercise of their own free will, to produce them. f. The decree to act is not the act. The decrees are an internal exercise and manifestation of the divine attributes, and are not to be confounded with creation, providence, and redemption, which are the execution of the decrees. The decrees are the first operation of the attributes, and the first manifestation of personality of which we have any knowledge within the Godhead. They presuppose those essential acts or movements within the divine nature which we call generation and procession. They involve by way of consequence that execution of the decrees which we call creation, providence, and redemption, but they are not to be confounded with either of these. g. The decrees are therefore not addressed to creatures, are not of the nature of statute law, 
and lay neither compulsion nor obligation upon the wills of men. So ordering the universe that men will pursue a given course of action is a very different thing from declaring, ordering, or commanding that they shall. Our acts are in accordance with the decrees, but not. Necessarily so, we can do otherwise and often should, park. The Frenchman who fell into the water and cried, I will, drown, no one shall help me, was very naturally permitted to drown. If he had said, I shall drown, no one will help me, he might perchance have called some friendly person to his aid. H. All human acts, whether evil or good, enter into the divine plan and so are objects of God's decrees, although God's actual agency with regard to the evil is only a permissive agency. No decree of God reads, you shall sin. 4. 1. No decree is addressed to you. 2. No decree with respect to you says shall. 3. God cannot cause sin, or decree to cause it. He simply decrees to create, and himself to act, in such a way that you will, of your own free choice, commit sin. God determines upon his own acts, foreseeing what the results will be in the free acts of his creatures, and so he determines those results. This permissive decree is the only decree of God with respect to sin. Man of himself is capable of producing sin. Of himself he is not capable of producing holiness. In the production of holiness two powers must concur, God's will and man's will, and God's will must act first. The decree of good, therefore, is not simply a permissive decree, as in the case of evil. God's decree, in the former case, is a decree to bring to bear positive agencies for its production, such as circumstances, motives, influences of his spirit. But, in the case of evil, God's decrees are simply his arrangement that man may do as he pleases, God all the while foreseeing the result. Permissive agency should not be confounded with conditional agency, nor permissive decree with conditional decree. God foreordained sin only indirectly. The machine is constructed not for the sake of the friction, but in spite of it. In the parable Matt. 13 colon 2430, the question, whence then it tears, is answered, not by saying, I decreed the tears, but by saying, an enemy hath done this. Yet we must take exception to principle Fairben, place of Christ in theology, for 56, when he says, God did not permit sin to be, it is, in its essence, the transgression of his law, and so his only attitude toward it is one of opposition. It is, because man has contradicted and resisted his will. Here the truth of God's opposition to sin is stated so sharply as almost to deny the decree of sin in any sense. We maintain that God does decree sin in the sense of embracing in his plan the foreseen transgressions of men, while at the same time we maintain that these foreseen transgressions are chargeable wholly to men and not at all to God. I, while God's total plan with regard to creatures is called predestination, or foreordination, his purpose so to act that certain will believe and be saved is called election, and his purpose so to act that certain will refuse to believe and be lost is called reprobation. We discuss election and reprobation, in a later chapter, as a part of the application of redemption. God's decrees may be divided into decrees with respect to nature, and decrees with respect to moral beings. These Last we call for ordination, or predestination, and of these decrees with respect to moral beings there are two kinds, the decree of election, and the decree of reprobation, see our treatment of the doctrine of election. George Herbert, we all acknowledge both thy power and love to be exact, transcendent, and divine, who dost so strongly and so sweetly move. While all things have their will, yet none but thine. For either thy command or thy permission lays hands on all, they are thy right and left. The first puts on with speed and expedition, the other curbs sin stealing pace and theft. Nothing escapes them both, all must appear and be disposed and dressed and tuned by thee who sweetly temperest all. If we could hear thy skill and art, what music it would be. On the whole doctrine, see shed, presb and reference reverend, January 1890 125.